Welcome back, all you fabricants and flashbacks, to the super, not funny show, Invincible Cast. And I am Mo De Poupe, your resident fabricant and commenter extraordinaire on all things pop culture. And I'm joined by my good friend, uh, superhero enthusiast, anime expert, video game uh, fanatic. Is that a fair thing to say? Um, (laughs) And all around (laughs) pop culture uh, aficionado, my good friend Lottie. Lottie, my friend, how are you doing on this Invincible finale uh, evening? Doing great. I'm pumped. Pop to talk about this episode. Absolutely. Uh, we are, of course, uh, recording the Invincible cast. I, I I hate to say it, the last Invincible cast of the season uh, because uh, Invincible and yeah, Invincible has uh, aired its finale tonight. Uh, but we're not going to be sad. We're going to be happy because we're going to be talking about uh, Invincible and uh, the finale and the the future, the future for Invincible. So. Um, Thanks again for joining us, all of you guys. But we're going to jump into uh, just talking about Episode 8 of Invincible Season 1. Um, and it's called Where I Really Come From. Um, I, actually, before I get into that, uh, and also sharing the good news uh, that I just uh, shared with Lottie off, uh, off air. That Invincible has been greenlit for two more seasons, at least two more seasons. We're going to see uh, the adventures of Mark Grayson and uh, Omni-Man, and Adam Eve, and the Guardians of the Globe, and I'm assuming at some point they're just going to stop coloring that logo yellow and, and blue, and they're just going to, it's just going to be all red. It's going to be nothing but red on it, because um, that seems to be the trajectory of this of this show. So, uh, Lottie, you just heard that news. Uh, what is the green uh, green lighting the next two seasons of Invincible? How does that, how does that make you feel? How does that strike you, man? Oh man, I feel good. Like honestly, I'm happy that this show is getting uh is like you said, is getting greenlit for another season because two seasons, it's good. not not one, two, well, two seasons. seasons. Yeah. This is a good show. Like honestly, they should just adapt the whole entire comic book. This is a really good show. One of the best just animated um uh, superhero uh shows in a very long time. E- easily in the last ten years. I mean it's no competition. Some people try to talk to me uh, on YouTube or other like social media saying, because I, I posted that oh, Invincible is, is the best <clears throat> animated series in the last 10 to 15 years. And one person was like, what about Young Justice? I replied to him and said, I'm going to just think that you weren't being serious about that. <laughs> because uh, <laughs> Young Justice is all right at best. <laughs> I think the first no, I think uh the first season of Young Justice was really really quite really good but I, I never yeah, watched it, it after good, that. good. But it wasn't like it was good but like as you see you never decided to watch it after that. Yeah, it was good because what else was out there to watch? Like if right. you really go and compare it to the other shows, it was good at best. Like I said I watched the whole like you said I watched two seasons of Young Justice, and I came away like, eh, it was all right. It was good. It was good at the time, but right. this this show, Invincible, is amazing. I uh, I want to know just there's just been some uh, you know you know social media starting to kind of blow up because like I said, this is you know this show's been out in the wild for probably about th- about three hours now, um, but social media sort of starting. To, now I want to say blow up, but there's definitely some hot takes. Uh, from people start, especially from the West Coast, as they're starting to see this, um, and so, from some uh, from some people in the industry, uh, I'm reading something from uh, Dan Slott. Oh, I don't, well, Lottie, I don't think you know who this guy is, but Dan Slott, he uh, wrote Spider Man for many years. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, he wrote Spider Man uh, like three times a month for like a few years, uh, probably. And in our in the late two twenty, you know, oh, oh, the aughts as they as they call them. So he knows he knows his superhero stuff. He actually, dude's been writing comics since the nineties, um, and he's he's a really good Spider Man writer. And he says uh, that that was a killer first season. Uh, way to set the bar. Good luck topping that, you poor bastards. And I have to say, can't disagree with anything he just said. So. Um, 
that's yeah. there and there's more pouring in the i think the consensus but so, aside the fact that amazon was like you know what two more seasons because you know usually with netflix and stuff you got to wonder like is this good enough are they gonna are they gonna give us another season and then you get to the end of the season like are we gonna get another season but nope we know for sure that for the next two years we will have animated invincible awesomeness and i for one uh cannot uh be more happy i can't could not be more happy about it because i know that this this story goes in so many crazy directions and um, so on that on that note, now with that great news, let's just go ahead and jump into talking about episode eight, the season finale of Invincible. So, mm-hmm. where do we start? <laughs> where do we start? Well, with this? <laughs> There's first. Oh my god! Let's gosh. just start off how wasn't expecting Mark just to be like, you know what? I'm gonna just punch you. I said, <laughs> I just like how we just started off going like, no, no, you have to be under control. <laughs> oh no! And then he was like, no, it's me. And then Mark was like, I don't care. I'm still gonna punch you. <laughs> <laughs> Mark was not trying to hear anything his dad had to well, say. Well, <laughs> you know what's what's funny about so the, what's funny about all of that is, um, I mean, it literally starts immediately after the previous episode where Mark gets to witness his dad rip the immortal in half mm-hmm. and 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 it all you know like i said it literally starts right after that and you where you see a rain of blood uh that where and you know the immortal falls to the ground and then you get the whole all right look mark Viltrumites, we're really basically just Saiyans. We're we're we're, we're Saiyans if Saiyans weren't so nice. <laughs> yeah, basically, because Saiyans still have some form of humanity. Yeah. Saiyans, because at the end of the day, um, good like let's let's just put this in perspective. Saiyans will not do what the fuck Viltrumites. Viltrumites killed their own race. They were like, hey, we're already super powerful. Fuck that. We need to be more powerful. So we're going to kill off half the world and have only the superpower beings left and have them fuck and have kids so every one of us is super powerful. I, just, I, I love the fact that they are like, you know that Thanos guy, he's on to something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we- and it's like, <laughs> there's only supposed to be the strong left. And, you know, that's the thing. The Saiyans will never do that. Just, just all this showed me is that, yeah, Omni-Man does not give a fuck. He literally is, he is a, you know, now that we can really talk about it now, he is a, he he literally is, like you said, um, what's the guy's name? He's Thanos. He looks at humans as an inferior race, and he's like, why the fuck are you saving them? Like, when Mark right. went and saved that uh, guy, why you saved him? I can literally pimp slap his head off. Look. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and I, you know, there's, here's the thing about, about this whole this whole interchange between you know Nolan coming clean about who he really is and who the Viltrumites you know the Viltrumites they're they're god level they're essentially a race of god god level you know beings mm-hmm. who are aggressive as shit and have decided to go and conquer the the universe uh, you know one planet at a time and and you know they first started the conquering by with themselves by you know culling the weak and then now they're spreading out and they have superman powers and you know they send out nolan has been sent out as essentially to destabilize a planet that needs to be brought into the fold um not you know not that they're going to kill everybody off the planet but just to you know to subjugate everybody mm-hmm. and that was his job from the beginning and i think the the interesting thing here is and Mark points this out is that he came, he went, as they used to say, that he, he went native. He came, you know, he came to here as a conqueror, but then he settled in and became one of us. And now he's realizing, oh, I got to be a conqueror. So uh, now that Mark's got powers, I got, I guess I got to conquer. And, mm-hmm. and it, it doesn't, the thing is, he tells us about how old, you know, he lives, he lived a long time and they don't mean anything. And what proceeds from there is quite possibly one of the most shockingly violent <laughs> bits of anything I've ever seen on TV or in a movie theater. And that includes like the Saw movies. And that includes, yeah. that includes Hostel. And that includes all that torture porn stuff. 
because he literally just like murders people with yeah, Mark. It, it was he, with with Mark. He doesn't kill. Yeah. He kills him people with Mark. Mark, yes. and that's the thing. It was one of the most psychological, emotional, spiritual, and physical brutal beatdowns I've ever seen. Like like you said, to kill hundreds of people with your son's face. Oh my god. That's <laughs> oh my god, that subway scene. I'm 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 telling you I'm watching I'm watching the and I was like I was like, okay, he's gonna he's gonna crash that. He doesn't crash the because I was thinking, oh, it was gonna be like, you know, he, they were gonna run into it and it would derail the train and that all that. No. Literally you see the thing crashing and Mark's fine and he's it's, everything's crashing off his body and p- body parts are flying everywhere and it's I just I'm watching this and I'm like ho- I'm like holy shit this is I, I don't know it was, I don't want to say I was speechless I was just like Jesus Christ there's they are li- he's literally making Mark kill people and yeah. Mark's helpless to stop, and that's that's really oh kind of God. kind of the point. The way he swore to try to get his hands off his face, because he was so helpless. When Mark was trying to save that 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 family, he's like, "Please," he said, "Don't be scared. I got you. I got you." And he's like, "He can't." Oh Jesus! Yes, that yeah. was like killing me inside. I'm like, I can't imagine that you're so weak against this impossible strong force because usually when you fight strong forces like this they're usually like mindless creatures or they just want to beat you down so they just punch you into anything right. nolan was beating him down calcul like it was all like it was all through calculation he was he punched him into chicago knowing exactly what the hell was going to happen he knew it he didn't punch him just Say, oh, I'm just gonna punch you hard and say, take this. No, he said, took take this because I know I'm gonna punch you straight into the metropolis of Chicago. And then he took him down into the sewer and said, hey, I know this train is coming, and I'm just gonna put your face into it. Oh, hey, you, look, remember Mount Everest? Yeah, I'm about to take you to Mount Everest and then punch you into Mount Everest and cause a freaking <laughs> yeah <laughs> avalanche. Well, I'm ass- I'm assuming that maybe that wasn't because there's too many people nearby, but. Yeah, it's. I think the the, what, the way we can kind of characterize that oh, yeah, entire no like about the, uh, the cruise, the cruise ship too. Yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, if we look at that, and you know, like you know, like I was saying, it's just a a montage of absolute brutality, like just yep. just body parts spraying. Every, like I remember he went when he was he got as you said he got punched into Chicago. And just trying to stop his momentum killed thousands of people. Just trying to stop his momentum. Um, yeah. And that and this is all you know. Nolan trying to be like, yeah, they're they're insects. We are gods, and you join me, or else they die. And this is you know what what this show has been kind of in my mind leading towards is what not just what kind of man are you mark what kind of hero are you you know are mm-hmm. you are you willing to die and and you know are you willing to stand against an unstoppable force and tell and and just give your life for the people and even even when they you know even the nolan's like it's useless it's absolutely useless just come over to my side luke i mean uh mark uh, <laughs> uh, come over to my side. I mean, it really was a Darth Vader moment there, and like a Darth Vader moment, you know, Mark doesn't blink, but Nolan does. That's what. Yeah. That's what. When we're you know, for all of the utter violence and devastation, and, and you know the desperation and, and that you see in Mark and everything and his heartbreak and all that. And with all of that that's going on and, and with his mom and everyone else wondering, is this the end of the world? You know, Omni man's gone crazy or has he gone crazy? He's, <laughs> or is he just revealing who he, who he really is yeah. with, with all of that? 
there's still underneath all of that still a a an emotional you know an emotional story line or story arc that's happening and it's not just with Mark and it's not just with Debbie but it's with Nolan because he's gone native and he is not in his heart a true Viltrumite anymore not really yeah um, because he had a chance to beat Mark to death and you know and he was he was beating Mark to death and he couldn't he couldn't yep. fit. he couldn't follow through um, and I to me it when I when I watched that part, that's when I started to I stopped being horrified by everything going on and I start started being more I'm started being more um sympathetic to Nolan. I, I know weird, right? He's a he's a horrible, horrible person. But I was very sympathetic to him because he couldn't pull the trigger. He loves you, I know you. You were saying like he doesn't love, he really love, but I'm I'm saying the otherwise. He does because if he didn't, he would have killed Mark and and done well, what yeah. he was going to yeah, do. Yeah, that is true. Um, and and just like how you were saying, that part kind of like almost brought me to tears because you know when he said when you know in 500 years, what will you have? And he was like, "You dad, like yeah." absolutely I, like yeah yeah you messed up uh you messed up uh nola you messed up you 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 sacrificed all this and you're going to kill your own son and like you said it's uh to the point where you felt so- sorry for him and he felt like he he was he he felt so trapped by his choice that he was going to kill his own son. And then he realized what he was doing to the point that his son breathing was, it sounded like it was coming from like a dying body, mm-hmm. you know? And right. it was just like, you know, you could imagine how much that hurt him when he, you know, when he flew away, like, he could, it's because he did. He couldn't do it. I mean, there, there's many. I mean, it's, this is a trope, uh, I suppose, among uh, the many, you know, stories we see all around. Someone who seems like they're, you know, they're committed to whatever terrible act they're doing, and they just can't. They can't actually do it. You know, yeah. he, he couldn't. At the end of the day, he may have participated in, in the Viltrumite purge and he was, you know, actually he was born after the purge, but he, he was born to be a true Viltrumite, but his love for his son did not allow him to follow through like he was supposed to and, yeah. and forced him to leave. Um, and so, at, at, you know, at the end of it, it really kind of counterbalance, it kind of counterbalances all of the, 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 ridiculous violence with underneath it all is just this really you know kind of nice I don't want to say nice but really kind of powerful story about uh, a, a son's love for his father mm-hmm. and his father's love for his son even when all of the lies and everything are stripped away and they know the truth about each other and that yeah. does that didn't ever make Mark feel like you're not my dad. It broke his heart that his dad was this guy. Yeah. And he tried so hard to make him see, you know, that he, he wasn't the Viltrumite he said he was. Yeah. And so, I mean, my God, so such a powerful, such a powerful like exchange. And remember, this is a, a anybody would have to have you believe this is just a cartoon. Well, you know, fuck off. This is not just a cartoon. If yeah. this is, you know, this is real drama and uh, and you know, r- real stakes for for characters that we have. I don't know about you. I personally, I've grown to just really have a connection with all of these people. Um, it's and so when these things happen to them, I actually absolutely do care. You know, I knew this is the thing. I knew how this was going to play out. I've read the comic, but seeing it play out on the screen and and voice acted 
masterfully, masterfully voice acted. Yep. Um, which is actually makes me want to bring go on to our, uh, another thing that I wanted to talk about. Um, we're kind of jumping around here, but that's fine because this this is relevant. Um, I you know I was saying before about what are, who are the MVPs uh, of the season, and I you know I've wrote down some names, but um, I want to hear hear your thoughts on these. I wrote down four names, so I want to hear your thoughts on their performances and what they did for the season, and in particular this last episode. Uh, oh, okay. how, how, well, I, well I'll, I'll, I'm going to name, name some names. These, these, these are the most obvious, but I just, I just want to hear. So, you know, Steve, Stephen Yoon, who, who, uh, who plays Mark, your, yeah. your thoughts on, on how he, he kind of brought Invincible to life. Yeah, he, he definitely portrayed a young, uh, confused uh, teenage kid very well. That you know, his voice acting was downright amazing. You know, his mark, like his every emotion, was played absolutely right to the point that it just felt natural. You know, sometimes you know, even when you're listening to some voices, like voice acting, you know, sometimes even sometimes good voice actors, there'll be times where you'll be watching a scene. And the voice that comes out of the character's mouth doesn't match what is going on in the scene sometimes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Sometimes that happens. Didn't happen with this. He did a really good job of bringing the character Mark to life. To the point that if they all of a sudden decide to change his character's voice, I'll be very upset. You know, he has to be Mark until the end, until the show ends. Right. No, yeah, I mean absolutely. I think it, it I think that's a given. Um I think he he f- came through like he came through as like naive and all that. He all of the fresh faceness, like it all all of the, you know, na- naivete, all of that really showed through early on. And as the season pr- proceeded and he learned actually what the world was really like and kind of he became less less, you know, fresh face and more kind of seasoned you know leading up to this very end where the the final the final um you know the, the betrayal that sort of opened his eyes completely and just to hear even at the end where, where he's just trying to process the the whole the whole situation after he recovered is yeah it was just it's just great great voice acting and i i could not hear anybody else as as invincible um, how about uh, Sandra O, who plays Debbie, uh, the mom? Once again, another great voice, great voice actor. Did did her job very very well. Um, it's to the point that you know, when it comes to like voice acting, it's it gets to the point that you almost become the character. To where, like, you know, like, uh, you'll hear, sometimes you'll hear voice actors, they'll do the voice in real life, and then it's almost like you could see the character right. in their face. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what I get from, like, almost this whole cast of, you know, voice actors. They have did a very good job, all of them, yeah. every single one yeah. of them. I, um, I really appreciate it, uh, Sandro's performance. Um as a great she's a grounding voice she you know there's a lot of superheroes running around talking a lot of shit and saying superhero stuff she's a very grounded down to earth you know she kind of humanize she humanizes nolan and she recenters um she recenters mark uh you know in in his life and she's the voice of reason but also she doesn't take shit you know she she's not afraid to to challenge or question Nolan. She's not so in awe of him. You know she she doesn't sit back and and just like kind of let him run run all over the place. She's assertive, and at the end of the day, you know she loves him, but she loves she loves Mark not Mark. She loves Nolan enough to be truthful and to call him you know on his shit. 
and mm -hmm. and at the end you can still see like even you know it, it's the last episode's a very emotional roller coaster for her and to hear the truth and and to be dismissed is oh, you know, yeah. just devastating for her yeah and still having yeah. to keep it together because mark is important is the number one thing in her world at that moment and i just think i think sandro she just she portrayed it all just in, in her voice just portrayed it all in, in such a, a great way that I have to be honest if these were stick figures I still would have been like I would have been you know go, uh, slow clapping this shit it, I mean it's you're right the whole the whole cast really um yeah let's one last one and this is obvious we're, we're it's obvious we got to talk about jk simmons the great jk simmons the the uh you know j jonah jameson himself yes. <laughs> uh it's just uh is it I, I don't know it's hard for me to even start about why he i in my mind he is the mvp of the season so i before yeah. i say that i want to hear what you gotta say i agree he was the first time i heard no i was like is that J.K. Simmons? Oh my God, they got J.K. Simmons on this show, and now it kind of saddens me. I'm not gonna hear like you know what that kind of like. It was a sinking pit in my stomach the whole time. Like, damn, we're not gonna see him. <laughs> we're right. not gonna be able, you know, we're not gonna hear his voice again for a, for a long time because I knew what was gonna happen at the end of the season. Right. You know, I pretty much knew a little bit what was going to happen in the comic book. It's just, I was like, damn, we're not going to hear J.K. Simmons again. Oh, no. Right. Yeah. No, he's, I, I, you know, what's the, what's fun about his, his performance is, you know, he, he hits all of the Superman tropes. You know, he's, mm -hmm. oh, you know, he sounds like he has a barrel chest, you know, he's, he's very forthright he has a very strong and commanding voice he sounds assertive like he's he knows how to lead he's he knows what to do in any situation and when he he then he softens it up when he talks with mark and you can see you know you can kind of see you can hear the the love and affection for it, his only son and and you can see and hear the affection he has for for uh debbie his wife yeah and then you see him turn that Viltramite on, and you see it, oh, yeah. but then you hear, Why did you, and you, you hear Why did that you voice, and he he just J.K. Simmons. He doesn't do bad things. Let's just call it like it is. But he yeah. he elevates this entire show on the strength of being able to be Superman, but also being able to be, you know, Zod. Because he's both, mm -hmm. they, he's both, he's both yeah. of them. He's Zod, he's Superman, and he can he can be Thanos too. He can he can be, you know, I'm a god and you're insects. And he can, you know what's what's really subtle about his performance is that mm -hmm. he's he is playing a guy that is lying to himself about yeah. his beliefs, and it's just it's just a subtlety that if you pay, if you listen. To when he's talking to Mark, he's trying to convince himself as much as he's trying to convince Mark about the truth, uh, what he, mm -hmm. what what the Viltrumites say is the truth, and that's that's the level that we're working at here. Um, J.K. Simmons by far just just absolutely killing it, destroying this role. He is he's going all in on this role, and everyone else is you know they're 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 working on high levels, but he's just. You know he's he's up he's up he's up up and away you know if just just to say um, and I, I absolutely loved it uh, I, and yeah I agree just uh, we gotta wait a year you don't have to wait a year man oh. uh, <laughs> oh. there are some oh, don't say that <laughs> God, see you uh, see people don't understand especially the younger viewers they didn't grow up. In the time of, like, for example, you no, know, they grew up in a time when, you know, nowadays anime, all these shows, they come out as soon as they're done. They didn't grow up in the time where, when Naruto season ended, we didn't know when it was coming back. 
and it will be we'll have to wait so long be so excited like like when naruto beat when naruto and sasuke fought and sasuke got away do you know how agonizing those years were <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> waiting <laughs> Right. And it's like you said, it's a year. I haven't been this excited for because usually, like for example, I love the boys. Like it's another show that's on Amazon. I love the boys. But when the boys ended, the season two ended, I was like, oh, dang. I can wait for season three though. Right. This this show being over, I'm like, what am I gonna do on Thursdays now? Dang. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I look forward like every Thursday night. Oh man. You know, every Thursday morning, I'm like, uh-oh, Invincible coming on. Let me hurry up and get through this day so I can go home and watch some Invincible. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. No, I I think um, it's, you know, it, it's it was been a very good six weeks, you know, working through this this uh, show. And it's unfortunate it comes, you know, you really just want, you want four, I want four more episodes, but I, I get it. You know, they're, they are making the show they want to make and they're doing it at the pace they want and to me the pace has been pretty spot on i think that there's no padding and no filler in this show it's all story all it's all important shit you need to see it's all character Mm -hmm. development and there's action and everything like that um i just wanted you know let me see where where we run it at on time we're at 30 minutes (laughs) um well, you know, there's a lot of other things happen in this in this uh, show. You know, like we saw Alan the alien come back and correct oh it, correct God. his mistake. Uh, you know, we can. I think we can. We can. Add, he talks about about the coalition of worlds. I think, and they know about the Viltrumites, and they don't want. You know, there's there's a coming confrontation. You know, I, I think we can expect to see Alan the alien uh, as voiced by Seth Rogen more in the future. And yes, that's one thing I'm happy about now. That even though what's the name's gone, we're gonna see more. I love that character, Alan the Alien. I just like his like, hey, there's a Viltrumite on your planet. <laughs> oh, that's it. Wait, you knew? <laughs> Wait, what are you talking about? Like, yeah, let's. And it was like an exact. <laughs> it was an exact mirror. It was a mirror image version of the first time they they met each other. You know, yeah. sitting and talking. He, he like, sat down, and then he was just like, wow. All that happened? That's real screwed up, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, we also, I loved, uh, like, just like the little things they sh- they threw in there. Like, uh, y- you know, Cecil's like, oh, yeah, we, we put a chemical in the water so y'all, so we can make shit invisible to people. I just, like, <laughs> just like, like, like a random thing. Oh, it works on Viltramites, but somehow everything else you do to Viltramites doesn't work. So it's amazing. Yeah, that's it's it. amazing. That was, I said this. I thought the same exact thing. I was just like, "That's a." I little, don't know about this. Yeah, that's a little stupid. But <laughs> uh, Amber, Amber came back and was like, "I told you, if you want to be, you know, you know, if you want to be in a relationship again, we can totally do it. I won't get mad at you about because you just went through a lot of stuff." <laughs> and, and I like that that uh, you texted me. Yeah, that, that <laughs> thing. he's like, <laughs> "I." That's exactly how I feel. Like, <laughs> bitch. What is your problem? Uh, how you, uh, you know? I even you know, I even talked to Jen. I, 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 well, let me tell you, I, t- I mentioned this to Jen too because I, I had to. She she didn't she missed the previous episode when well, she's watching the finale with me, and I was like, oh yeah, you know Amber knows about it, but they broke up because she was like because she said he lied to her about the secret identity, and she was like, that's what you do with the secret identity, and I was like, thank you, I so, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh what, what are you like, thinking about <laughs> like when she showed up and i was just like wait wait hold up just because i got my ass whooped by my damn dad now all of a sudden hold up now wait 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 but, but, but just Mar- because i got Mar- my ass whooped yeah. by my dad on by in front of the whole world and millions of people died and i could have saved them now all of a sudden you feel sorry for me you want to yeah. date me again but, hell but, no but mark's mark's kind of like but pity sex, though. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm, I'm still, well, yeah, I'm still yeah, hurt. I, I, I'm still I, hurt. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I can understand. You know, honestly, I can't blame Mark for that. I mean, you you in the hospital for two weeks. I can understand why you might want some. <laughs> <laughs> it's just um, it's just convenient that she showed up. I was just I knew she was coming. I was yeah. like, she's about to come after I, that ass whooping 
on yeah. national television. Well, I won't even say national television. No, worldwide international, television. Yeah, international. Yes, absolutely. worldwide television. I mean, Jesus Christ. It's so weird. I mean, you know, it's I, I, I find it uh, it's kind of weird, but also I guess it makes sense that in that universe, that's the that's uh, that whole thing was essentially the equivalent of the blip or or the you know the uh, the snapping uh like everyone knows about it and they're still like what the fuck does this mean you know it's it's uh it's interesting because this is a world full of superheroes so just seeing that mm-hmm. how that's how big a deal it was uh i also did like the way that you know the uh the Scooby gang seems to be getting drawn together uh the four <laughs> the two people with no powers and two people with powers and maybe they'll go on uh, you know, get a van and go on and solve mysteries or something. And then every now and then, Invincible is going to have to fly off and punch things. So, uh, I just, I, I was like, okay, we we got a little teen, you know, uh, what would you call it? The, the Bayside High group, uh, the four, mm-hmm. four people that are friends. So that was fun. Um, I think, <clears throat> what about that ending though? The ending of the episode where they're like, you know, what are you going to do with yourself? And like, uh, future threat, future threat, future threat, future threat here. Uh, things we're going to have to deal with invincible. Just so you know, you don't have to just worry about fucking around with your dad. You know, you have to also deal with all of these other, uh, you know, all of these other domestic threats that are going on. So, Hey, you know, don't, uh, don't, uh, you know, don't get out of training or something. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, that's, are you excited to see them follow up on that? They're obviously laying breadcrumbs, you know, how excited are you to, for them to follow up on those things? Yeah, it's about time, man. <laughs> you know, it's just, I like how they added all that stuff in there and they add in the story and it's just like, turns out the aliens that we thought, what's his name, wiped off from the face of the earth, they're not they're still alive and he they want earth again and they're showing all the different things that the loose ends that yeah mark uh you need to be a superhero or the earth is fucked <laughs> <laughs> yeah basically yeah even nolan was like you know we've been putting out fires this whole time so yeah apparently this earth it's got all sorts of problems and um uh, some of them are created some of them you know, they're definitely Cecil's not done making his his uh, plans. The Mahler twins, who the hell knows what's going on with those, you know, those crazy, you know, and fun guys. Um, and some, you know, the guy, the, mol- the molten guy, you know, the lava guy, apparently not dead, I guess. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> all that's going on. And, and Mark still has to graduate high school because, you know, Peter Parker never gets a day off from homework. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I think there's a bright bright future ahead uh in in this show not not the least of which is eventually having to clear up the whole deal with the viltramites uh i happen to know that that is going to be a major major storyline uh in in the future so hopefully we can get to that in season four or five because between here and that part of the story there's a ton of stuff going on uh like uh, just a lot and um i guess the last thing the last thing but um i mentioned earlier we were talking about the useless ass guardians um can i tell you something believe can you believe it or not i like those guys i fucking like those guys now there is something that happened in the last two episodes something happened in the last couple episodes that has turned my opinion about the new guardians of the globe they're still useless as shit mind you uh if you have to fight invincible level bad guys but i like them as a team now i've come around on them yeah i mean power wise they're they're pretty much useless i'm just gonna be honest they're pretty much (laughs) except i mean except adam eve she and she's not even on the team yeah adam eve is powerful but like honestly they're like uh how can i compare it they're like uh they're like the Z fighters in Dragon Ball Z. They they're good against like fodder slash stuff. But anytime like a super powerful being shows up, um, 
they're gonna get their ass fucking drug. Right. <laughs> Don't get a, you just stay over there and just save people while me invincible fight these motherfuckers. You know what I mean? Except Adam Eve. And of course, you know, the immortal who they're gonna bring back to life. But honestly, you're right. Like honestly, you're absolutely right about um uh I do like I do like the uh the new de- de- to me honestly in my opinion they I think they are, they're going to be a better team when it comes to teamwork than the other guardians because the other guardians when they you can just tell when they face against uh um what is it called un unbeatable odds they fell the fuck apart right while this guardians when they faced unbeatable odds they stood up to the occasion like with you know the people that beat the fuck up out of mark you know what i mean right like they actually stood up because yeah the other guardians downright each one of them will are will probably kill each one of those guardians you know what i mean like all t- like let's just say all together the immortal is more powerful than all those guardians combined. But honestly, when it comes to um, teamwork, I think this guardians have way better teamwork than the other ones. Right. No, there's. I think they. You know, uh, Black Samson. His his at, the way he responded. You know, at the end of that episode, really kind of solidified to me. I'm like, okay, I like these guys. I like everything they went through. You know robot and all that uh, all that stuff and yeah they weren't able to go get involved with mark and, and i'm you know they shouldn't have they were not that's not their their deal but they were a team out there you know really you know being heroes in the way that they could be so i like them now and i i, I can't wait to see more i, I suspect mark's going to join them at some point or at least be like his dad was to the other guardians so, except he's not going to murder these guys. So <laughs> I, I don't think Mark has it in him to murder his friends because they I think they are his friends now. So. All right. So overall, great finale. Absolutely great finale. In my opinion, uh, I'm, I'm assuming you agree with me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> absolutely great finale. Uh, a great season. Probably one of the my favorite things I've watched in the last five years. Um, stands up there. Uh, you said one of the best anime. I'm gonna say one of the best superhero things, period, that uh, has has been released. Like definitely in the last five years, it stands up there in my in my mind. In fact, fight me on this. It's better than Falcon and the Winter Soldier and WandaVision. It's more consistent, um, especially for it being an animated uh, feature. Um, I feel like it coming in with you not knowing anything about any of the characters you can get into it as hard and as and become as as uh you know as a big a fan as you do of the mcu um Mm -hmm. properties that you've seen 20 something odd movies from and that's that's what's important it has that iron man quality that iron man one quality where you don't know who this guy but you do at the end of it and that, and you want more of that guy, and I think that really and that's that is the triumph of Invincible as uh, as a show, as particularly as a superhero show, because this genre is getting crowded right now. Everyone wants what the MCU has. Everyone thinks they've got some property. They got Bloodshot. They got you know they got all this stuff, <clears throat> and they don't <laughs> not really the mcu has it it for a reason because of their creative you know their creative teams and their they've centralized all of their storytelling and they've got good smart people that understand what good stories are and skybound has robert kirkman who has proven himself over the last almost 20 years to be a great teller of stories in particular um you know superhero stories so mm-hmm. that's my, in my opinion, this, it, 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 there's nowhere to go but up with this, this show. And it's already yep. starting pretty damn high in there in, for me. So <laughs> I don't know if you wanted to follow that up. <laughs> oh, no. Sorry about that. I was, yeah. 
Yeah, like honestly, like you just said, yeah. This this show, uh, like it. This is a like you said, this is a great show. It's going. I'm excited for what else they have to show. What else is you know there in the future? Because honestly, I enjoyed every last second of um, Invincible. You know, mm-hmm. I I'm excited to see because you know, like I said, they had that little montage of what what's to come. I'm really with to see what you know when he gets to the Viltrumites, and the Viltrumites goes like, "Wait, hold up, hold up! You came back empty-handed, and your son is fighting for Earth. Nah, we we ain't letting this one slide. No, definitely We're going not. Back over there. Definitely not. You know, it's it's going down. It is going down. Uh, but mm-hmm. hopefully, Mark will be re- be ready by then. Yeah. So, all right. So we <clears throat> we've. Uh, I think we we I think we've covered the bases pretty well, uh, you know, yeah. uh, for the season finale and I think for the season of uh, Invincible. So, um, all you fabric and flesh bags out there, if you haven't been watching Invincible, first of all, why are you listening to this podcast if you haven't watched the show? Uh, but if somehow you still, you know, you're like I haven't done it yet, I'm go pull the trigger. You're not going to be disappointed. It's going to give you. Uh, much much satisfaction uh if you like the things uh the way we like them which is lots of action lots of character development uh and it's not not dumb or brainless it's it's definitely it's saying a lot of things so uh get out there and watch that if you haven't watched it yet did you want to say anything else before we sign off for this at the end of the season lottie (laughs) maybe i should give you a chance (laughs) yeah they should yeah definitely watch this show Definitely. If you haven't watched it, please watch it. Um, and if you have watched it, yeah, I'm pretty sure you're probably telling your friends, family, significant others to watch this show too. Trust me, I'm trying to get other people to watch it too, and they're being stubborn. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, what did you guys think of this season finale and the season of, um, of Invincible? And also... Um, do you agree? Disagree? Uh, just have some comments for what we had to say. You know what you can do? Get down to that comment section and start typing away. Let us know what you're thinking. And hey, are you subscribed to the Super Not Funny Show? Wait, you're not? Well, what the hell are you doing? Get down there, hit that subscribe button, join the Super Not Funny Show family. And while you're down there, hit that notification bell so you'll know when we drop new content. And we do that every week. New reviews and new reactions. And we do podcasts like the Invincible Cast. All right, all you fabricants and flashbacks, thanks for joining us on this, uh, the last episode of this season. I guess we'll call it season one of the Invincible Cast. Uh, check out the Super Not Funny Show page to see uh, yet more podcasts. I do believe we're going to start talking about superhero stuff in general. So stay tuned for that. Uh, when we start dropping new episodes for that thing. All right. I've been Mo De Poupe, your resident fabricant and commenter extraordinaire on all things pop culture, joined by uh, my good friend Lottie, uh, video game enthusiast, anime expert, and all-around pop culture enthusiast. And we'll see you guys on the other side of the thread. Peace. Peace. Peace.